Welcome back to Sip the Tell Films. And as you can see, today's topic is being Cleveland. I think the left guard position is his to lose. Uh, we're training the camp coming up um, next month or maybe the end of this month. Um, I think he really is his job to lose. Uh, if you look at the stats last year, when he came off of injury, there were some games where he played a little bit, played, didn't play, and then was hurt some at the beginning of the year or the middle of the year. The last four games is what I took for this film. He played 100%. Of those snaps, the last four games, and this is, I graded, I graded every play for those last four games because he played every snap, and um, this is the the outcome of that. So, welcome back. Uh, if this is your first time here, make sure you uh, hit that like button if you like the content. Uh, if you really like the content and want to see more, make sure you subscribe and turn your bell notifications on, notifications on so you can be notified when I drop these random videos. But back to being Cleveland. While grading these four games, I didn't grade it as harshly as I would grade it if I was like his position coach. Didn't grade on alignment, assignment, technique, and all those other different things. Really just gave him a plus or a minus, whether if I think he got his job done or it didn't. So, you know, a real O-line grade would probably be lower, but on the basis of this study and trying to get it done and not take forever with it, I did it on plus or minus based off plus if he got his job done or if I think he did his job right, minus if he didn't get his job done. And his grades, for the most part, were fairly high. And I'm going to kind of show you the grades for him, you know, here in a second. The, the, the worst game I will tell you was the Rams game. And that because of, he dealt a lot with uh, AD. But the Green Bay, he graded out 94%. And keep in mind, those grades could be lower depending on technique and different things. The Bengals, he graded out at 86%. The Rams is going to be the lowest at, um, what's that, 70-something? 78%. Then he jumped back up with a good game to end versus the Steelers. And a lot of the Steelers game, he was uh, matched up against Hayward. And he finished that game with 92%. And watching these four games, when you go back and watch them all, you really the Steelers game really looks like his best game. And I really and even though he graded his percentage was higher in the Green Bay game, but the Steelers really looked like his best game because he was going against Hayward most of the game. And Hayward tried all his little moves and whatnot. And he didn't have a lot of success against him, but the ball came out quick. That's the difference in a lot of these games. The ball came, the ball came out quick, and the only person that really was giving him fits was Aaron Donald. But let's get into the film portion. Right, again, he's our left. Left guard, so I'm not going to highlight him or spot shadow him every time because he's in the same spot every play. This is against the Steelers. You just rooted the guy out of there. It's a good job of just getting low, getting leverage. One-on-one -on -one block, solo block. Start off with a double team, but Bozeman leaves and goes to the linebacker. So now it's mono a mono right there. Look, he got extension on him, got good leg drive, got good bend. Just pressing the guy out of there. Just pressing him out of there. Great block. And again, played all played every snap for the last four games. So this is a good indication of what he can do. I don't know if it was a trial for him, but that's how I took it as a trial. A lot more nimble than I originally expected. Sift through it. Because you're supposed to turn up, but this guy's out. Does a good job of fitting him up. And then the rest, you know, is history. Murray gets that long touchdown versus the Steelers. And Murray had a bunch of decent runs versus the Steelers in or around being Cleveland. And this this is this film is not all 100 percent He do everything right. So it's gonna be some, some bad plays sprinkled in here and there and just you know just deal with him. Yeah, he can do that a lot, especially on the help out. If he if he doesn't have a guy he's primarily responsible for, he goes and helps out a lot. But what I like about what he does is he's so long and so strong that he can stick that hand out there and help if if somebody threatens this gap. So he can feel somebody threatening that gap, then he can turn his attention there. But now his attention's on the outside because we know this is Villain Waver and this is, is that what? 
It's not Watt. But still, it's filling the way. So he got a hand there to help with Hayward. And if you feel Hayward, he'll go help Bozeman. But he's really looking to see what's going on out here at this edge. He tries to come back inside. He sees it. Gets a knockdown. And a lot of his pass pro, he gives ground, but he gives ground slowly. So he's giving ground, but it's still, it's not like somebody's whooping him right off the snap with the exception of AD sometimes. Now on this play, the reason I put this one in, because he understands when to log. He's supposed to kick this guy out, and then feeling the way he's supposed to wrap up in there. But because Watts slams so hard down inside, he just gets on top of this right shoulder right here and logs him down. And now Villain Wave was supposed to read that and come outside. And then if the back has the ball, he's supposed to read it and come outside too. It's a good job of logging. Villain Wave and the back reads it. Even though they don't have the ball, they did a good job of reading it. Huntley has the ball. So good job of understanding when to log and when to kick out. Now, on this one, this pool, I really think this should have been more violent. Come through there and, and, and attack this shoulder, and make, you should knock him to this hash. Should. He just braced for the hit. All he did was brace himself for the hit. You got to get low enough to get under them pads, and upon contact, throw them hips, push them hips through like a power clean, and not just grab. He ain't bring, he ain't bring the hips on that one. He just ran into him with it just ran into him. But if you get at this point and I throw them hips, it's, he he's going back here. With all that mass being Cleveland guy, if he do it right, he's going back there. Let's keep it going. Now, this is one of the bad ones. This is one of the bad ones. I don't know if this is reader or not. Too much forward body lean. Too much forward body lean off balance. He just takes, he he uses his his lean against him. He just throws him by. And they make the tackle. I think this might have been a fourth down, and we didn't get it. But that, that call was fourth down. See? Good. Not bad with the pass pro. He's right here. Right there. Good job of. Of, of keeping his feet. It's not about what 65 doing with his hands. It's about what Ben Cleveland doing with his feet. It's a good job with his feet. With all that Mr. Miyagi stuff um, the guy was doing with his hands, it's, it's about Ben Cleveland's feet. Here's versus the Packers. Good double team. Good job of when as a coach. When you have a double team, the perfect double team is when you take a guy and take that guy to this guy. And that way you understand both of those guys are blocked. And nobody really has to come off and be a solo block. If you could take this man and push him in the lap of the linebacker, that's a perfect double team. They pushed him right up into the lap of the linebacker. See now? Those two right there with those two. Perfect double team. And look at his feet. All that twist, all that, uh, those arm overs and those <laughs> slap down 65 trying to do. Cleveland's a lot better with his feet. A lot better with his feet. It's all about the feet. And like I said, he's way more nimble than I originally th thought. Way more nimble than I originally thought. This is, nah, this is versus the Rams. This is kind of where some of the, the, the <laughs> but it's AD. How many guards can block AD on a regular basis? Now, I will say this. And I don't know if this is one of them or not, but AD didn't get him every time. And this is one of the times he didn't get him. Did a good job with his base, not being overextended, staying within his framework, and just not being overpowered. Because AD can get you with speed and power and quickness and smarts. Now, again, this is our guy right here. I think he's going to end up on AD again. See, now he gave up immediate pressure right there. That was definitely a minus. But there ain't very many people that stopped this move from AD. Chop that hand down, step, jump through, and get that shoulder by. That's, that's tough. That's tough. That's tough. You're a rookie and you got to block Aaron Donald. That's tough. 
But again, like I said, Aaron beat him more than anybody that I saw in the last four games. But he got his share of, of, of Aaron Donald's arm too. Look at him. Look at him pressing all the way to the end zone. That's how you move people right there. That's how you move people. Got to start with leverage though. Look at the flat back. Ah, oh, I stopped it too. I didn't stop it in the right time. Let me see if I can stop it right. Slow forward. Flat back. He just missed with the hand. If he could have got that hand in the right spot initially, he'd have pushed him back immediately. Replaced it. Now his hands in the right spot. Now watch him drive. Watch him drive. Hands in the right spot up under that up under that flap of that shoulder pad. He's driving him in the end zone. That's that's one of the, the good things you get out of Cleveland right there. Look at that. Same cat. But now it's a different cat. That's 76. Look how he just manhandled him and moved him off the ball. Now, now I'll show you how far how far it is. Cause it, watch this line right here. By the time Ben finished with him, this cat going to be on the other side of this line. He gonna, his feet are on, on this lower side. When he finished, his feet going to be on this side. Watch. Well, to the line, not on the other side, back to the line. But well, that's resetting the line of scrimmage. You reset the line of scrimmage a yard or two, that's going to help your run game every time. I love, I love him in the short area pools. Short area pools are, are a good form, especially with his footwork. Identify. He's trying to get them hands in the right spot. Trying. And, but instead of what I would say do, instead of coming from here, had them some guns in the holster. Like you're going to pull your pistols out, then shoot them straight out. And, and don't just go grab like a big bear hook. Had them some guns right there. Like you're going to pull your pistols out in the western and then shoot them right up to the numbers. But he's trying to get him in the right spot, though. That's what I like. And he gets the guy out of there anyway, with ease. Look like 93 made a business decision. Now he got kind of extended again. You see from time to time he gets overextended and a little arm over move gets him. Got too aggressive. Off balance. Gives up immediate pressure. We ain't going to talk about that guy to his left, though. We ain't going to talk about him no more. All right, let's see what we got with AD. Uh-huh. AD tried to let jump move again. He caught him in the air. Caught him in the air. Pushed him back about three yards. That's learning. Okay, I saw that move a couple of times. Now let me, you know, how can I counter it? Caught him in the air. Got him a nice little thrust, little shove. And he can do that because of his feet. His feet. He got good balance. He ain't, not, he ain't lunging too far forward or sitting too far back. Got good knee bend. And when he jumps in the air, he just takes him and shoves him. Because he's already naturally strong. Not saying he's as strong as AD, but still. He already naturally strong. That's a good job of, of not being beat by the same move. Love the down blocks. Him on down blocks are awesome. Him on down blocks are awesome. What he want to do is try to get that helmet right down that shoulder pad. So that guy can't go up the field or down the field. He it makes contact on the hash. And they kind of stay on the hash, but still. Good job of not allowing that guy to cross his face. Right. This is one of the few times somebody other than AD bull rushed him and he gave it up too fast. A lot of times in his bull rush, when people try to bull rush him, they, they still get up under him, but he gives it up slow, like real slow. This time he gave it up immediately, stepping on uh, Snoop's feet. So you got to work on that. Definitely got to work on that. And I love this combo. Love this combo block. Because again, you see his, his footwork. Help him, help him with the double team there. The linebacker triggers to this gap. He fires off and hits him. And hits him. Great job. That's that's how you combo. That's a combo block right there. His eyes never left 57, which is great. His hand, ha, ha, they have man that. Feeling the way we got to take it over. Then when he fires that hole, that open gap, but she thinks an open gap, Ben Cleveland bangs him. 
I got a few more plays, but I'm trying to cut this off at 15 minutes. We have 14-10 right now. So maybe one more play. Uh, like this. And this is a couple of times, too. Picking up stunts. He does a good job of picking up stunts and not just marrying this guy that's trying to trying to set the pick. He does a good job of playing with his eyes. He look, he's blocking that dude, but his eyes on him. And he's going to fall off. Probably gave too much to the initial guy, but still being able to see it and come back and get a piece of 91 to protect the QB. This is another one versus AD. See, AD can beat you with quickness. He can beat you with speed. He can beat you with power. This one, he just gave him old basketball. Pop, pop, pop. Got him off balance. Arm over. I ain't. Hey, you got. You just got to chalk that up. The best that one of the best to ever do is just just gave you a lesson. Another combo. See it? That's what I like about it. That's that's gonna help the run game out. Give you something right there. Then see the trigger in linebacker. Come off on it. Hat on a hat. Look at that. Hat on a hat. Hat on a hat. And look at the Alec Murray guy. You love it. You gotta love it. This last one, I'm going to cut it off right here. Down block again. Run him up out of there. Love the down blocks. Gave a li Let him cross his face and get back into play a little bit. But for the, the initial come off, I love it. I love it. The initial ball get off. Bam. He ain't moving much, though. <laughs> Whoever that knows is, is stout because he ain't moving much. But he showed fired off the ball. But again, going back to this, that was a little... That was the last one. So we got through them all. Ben Cleveland, I really think it's his job to lose at, at left guard. And uh, if he progressed any from what I saw the last four games, he really should have his job wrapped up. So uh, this is the, the latest from Sip the Tally Films. I'm your host, Coach Evans. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you chose to be here with me. Uh, make sure you like if you like the video. Uh, comment. You know, I be in the comments all the time. And um, I appreciate y'all, man. Enjoy your 4th of July. And, uh, Pop some fireworks for me because I'm too old for that. And my kids grown. Peace.